volume together so I'm hoping you guys can hear me really well so yay for me <laughs> yay for me so I'm still learning um like I said when I was down at the uh studio at WHPS I had to you know I had my own engineer and I had people working behind the scenes so I'm like behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, I am looking for an engineer, I will be paying them, and, um, you know, I, it's good that I'm getting everything together, uh, I was in the process of, uh, filling out, um, applications and trying to get scholarships to go to nursing school, so what I think I'm gonna do first, because I just thank the Lord for giving me a mind to want to learn everything and let my mind be a sponge and soak everything up, so I'm thinking about going to broadcasting school first, I don't know how long it is. I did look up a couple of schools, and um, I'm thinking about doing that so I can get a better understanding about how to set up a studio and everything. Even though I've had my studio for maybe about four or five years, because I was in studio at uh, WHPS, I didn't really use my equipment like I should. And, uh, I have all kinds of filming equipment and broadcasting equipment, and I never used it. So now, you know, I want to um, venture out and start using my own things and get me a crew together and just start doing things that I think that would be beneficial, not only for me, but for the community. So uh, I want to give a shout out to my husband, Charles Stinson, whom I love so much. And he is just always there for me. And I just thank the Lord that there's still good men in the world. And um, he's the type of person that I met him like um, over 20 years ago, and his character has never changed. He's still the same uh, person that I know and that I fell in love with, so I thank the Lord for that. Uh, I do have a contest that I'm doing. It's called Fab Over 40, so you can go to fabover40.com slash Donna Stinson 2024. I, I need you guys' votes. I'm going to put up... a uh, um put something up so you guys can see it. If you go through my playlist, you can see like maybe a couple of years ago, I um, uh, signed up to do this contest. I didn't get the votes that I thought I would get, but I was close because it was it was me and another lady. And I think out of like a hundred people, I got down to the, 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 the bottom two. And I think the reason, well, I don't even want to think what the reason was, but I didn't win. So now I'm feeling like I have a good uh, chance to win this. I'm going to post um, up uh, where you can go. I'm going to put the link up and everything where you can go and vote for me. I would really appreciate it because I need all the votes I can get. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Mike. Uh, I, I, I've been calling him. He's been calling me. We've been playing phone tag. I'm so sorry that I haven't got a chance to get in touch with you, Mike. But I will be calling you uh, later on. And Today is the election day to vote, uh, and uh, in some of my previous videos, you know, I was talking about Halloween, I was talking about voting, and because those videos are so choppy, I think I'm going to take them down because that's not very professional, and I want to do things in decency and order, so I think I'm going to take those down because it's very hard to hear that, but I'm going to do some recap over some of the stuff that I talked about. One was Kamala Harris. So, uh, I see that she has Beyonce, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, 
gorilla, all of these raunchy women, and you just insult foundational black American women. You insult us throwing this type of mess in our face, thinking because we see somebody twerking and they butt shaking or they got money that we're going to be like, oh, we're going to vote for her. And not saying that I'm going to vote for um, Trump. I voted for Christ. I wrote Christ in. So I, I, I voted. My votes come. My ballot comes to the House. So I vote like that. So I didn't vote for n neither one of the two or, uh, of the evils. So you boo to both of them. But I'm speaking as Kamala Harris claiming to be a black sister. Some of you women are so deceived. And now she has... Um, I guess he's a, I forget what the, a white supremacist, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, standing up for her, supporting her now, and uh, I don't know if she supports him, but he's supporting her now, I don't think, I think his name is Bruce, or I'm not sure, but uh, he's supporting her now, and uh, for her to get on live TV, any type of uh, platform and say uh, she's a black woman and she wants the sisters up, you, and you speak for the sisters, you don't speak for me. You don't speak for me and I'm quite sure you don't speak for a lot of women, even though a lot of black women do uh, are upset and want to get upset when you say you're not voting for Kamala and this, that, and the other. Boo to you. We all got a mind. That's the most beautiful thing about the United States, uh, the divided states of America. We can say what we want, we can say how we feel, and we can vote for who we want to vote for. So y'all can just get that out your mind, feeling like y'all going to shame somebody into voting for this woman. Because I'm not the one. So you're going around, even at the beginning, the very beginning. Nobody nominated this woman into office. I told you people back in... 2015 or 2016 or something like that, when Biden Harris got into office, I said to you people, and if you go back into some of my older shows uh, around this time of the year or when they were first into office, I told you guys he was not going to make, make it through um, his presidency because back then he looked like he has the, had dementia or Alzheimer's or something like that. I said that back then, and lo and behold, he, he can't even keep a, a, a sentence together. He can't speak his mind. His mind goes here. His mind goes there. And Kamami, Kam 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 she just came in through the back door, so to speak. You already said, I'm not going to do anything just for black people. But you you want our vote so bad. You bring all these ratchets on stage. And trust and believe, and I'm talking to Megan Thee Stallion, Beyonce, all of that. You may have been paid, which I know you guys were paid, because you guys don't do nothing without getting paid. But she exploited you guys. Like you guys exploit a lot of people that you hire and put on the stage with you. So she exploited you guys for her own agenda. Because when she get in the White House, Who's going to get that 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 year that annual money, that annual check? Who's going to get that? She is. Who's living in a White House got service and secret service people all over her? She do. After she get in, what is she going to do for you, Jack? That's what I don't like about politicians, and I've been saying this for years, and I've never met an honest politician in my life. Not only do they not speak to you, after they get in office, when it's time for them uh, to be reelected, outside of Ken Worthy, I don't know why anybody isn't running against her. But outside of that, the only time they speak to the people or to the grunts or whoever they get to do their footwork, go door to door, is during an election year. And the only reason some of these people are doing it is because either they're starstruck or they're getting something under the table. But that's all they're getting. The bad thing about it is they bring their family in to do footwork. They bring their children in to do all this footwork for somebody who don't care nothing about them, you, or me. And I just find it so ironic how a b bunch of black women would 
lead you on to a woman that don't care for black women, that used the fact that she had said that she was a black Asian, and she's not. This woman was on Saturday Night Live, like, Saturday. That's like, isn't that against um, the presidential election rules? You're not supposed to be getting all of this airtime like that. Matter of fact, I was uh, looking on, I think it was Instagram or Facebook or something like that, and they were they had the CNN news on or something like that. And it popped up that Kamala Harris had won 52 to 47. So I'm letting you guys know, if that comes to fruition, you, you guys know that they cheated. They'll do anything to keep this man out of office. Like I said, I'm, for, I'm, I'm not for neither nor. None of them, neither nor. But when a person uses their culture or uses my culture to try to get my vote or to try to shame me, then you're the one I'm targeting. Now, when she was when she was the vice president, you could tell because I have these people in my family too. Her eyes was always red. She was slurring her voice. She she was she's a drunk. This is my opinion, and I'm entitled to have it. And I feel like she's a drunk. So when she was nominated, well, not nominated, forgive me, Lord. When she was pushed on us to run for the presidency because Biden wasn't in his right mind, so, you know, she was the next best thing by default. When she was pushed on us, you know, after her saying she's not doing anything and saying that she and Biden, she was part of uh, making the decisions on all the things that were going on with a uh, foundation of black Americans, I didn't care for her then. And that wicked... <laughs> That is the phoniest person I've never met in my life. I would never want to meet her. They sent me an invitation when she was here in Michigan, talking about, um, you know, in all caps and exclamation marks and this, that, and the other, trying to make it so exciting on paper. Would you like to come and come down here and visit Kamala? And I put, the devil's hell no. Why would I want to go and be around somebody that's not for me, and has my demise at for their best interest. There's a lot of people that claim that this woman uh, can do no harm. Oh, oh, you, you have to understand this is going to be the first black American woman in history to be um, president. That's a lie. Stop saying that. Most of the people who've done the first things in America are immigrants. And she was an immigrant. I don't care how long she's been here. If you're not from here, you're an immigrant. And speaking of that, I need to get off the subject for one second. Yesterday, me and my husband, he went to go try and get um, a car. So... First, we went to La Fontaine off Plymouth, I guess, in Haggerty Road, and we thought it was going to be a good deal till the guy tried to scam us. Hey, Brian. And, um, uh, you know, I was asking him, well, how much is it going to be all together and this, that, and the other, and they gave, he gave me this price, and I'm thinking that, oh, that's a good price. They did us good. I'm going to bring my vehicle down here and trade it in and do some dealings with them and this, that, and the other. So on the way going home, well, as we were filling out the papers, I'm like, what is this uh, other number right here? And she was like, oh, no, you got to put down $1,000, blah, 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 and this, that, and the other, which I had no problem doing. But I'm like, why is the number so big? So as I went, as, as we're driving, I get home, I start thinking, and I'm like, this guy played us because he was supposed to give us an out-the-door number, and then he racked up all these charges on us. And he said that... Um, that the gap was going to be, the gap protection was going to be on La Fontaine, and he would even throw, he would even throw in $20. And we started going through that. He didn't put gap protection, $1,000, this, that, and the other. I'm like, no, we don't want this car. You played us. I don't know how many people this guy has done that to. Now, I, I went down there yesterday because I had to sign some papers to get out of this deal. 
But there was a lady down there. Her name was Amy. And she seemed like a nice person, but all um, car salesmen seem like a nice person. And I, I, I'm going to come back on here and talk with you guys about Macquisition Motors. Uh, I forget it. I think it's in Wyandotte, but this place is horrific. And I'm going to give some of the, um, I'm going to uh, read some of the reviews too. But um, after we left there and, and took care of that, my husband wanted to go see about another place. So we go to this place on Seven Mile and Inkster, and it's an elderly Arab man. And the Arab guy is, you know, telling us about the car. So everywhere I go, I wear my body cam. So I wear it in, clean, in, in plain sight because I want people to see it. So he was like, what is that? I say, it's the body cam. No, no, I don't want to be taped, this, that, and the other. So I say, it, there's no, it's no problem. I, I'll turn it off. So... We didn't want to get the car because the car was kind of rusted and this, that, and the other. And he and he was saying we couldn't get a deal or whatever. So as we're leaving, he's telling me, you can't do that. You can't tape me. And uh, that's illegal. And I'm like, no, sir, it's not illegal. So as we're getting ready to leave, this guy runs behind my husband's car and started taking, well, first, he breaks out with his camera and started filming me. Okay, here I am. I, I'm not upset about that. So... As uh, he's talking about, well, this is this is the best country in the world. And I say, everybody is getting filmed. Big Brother is watching. So by this time, I had turned off my camera. So uh, uh, he's like, well, this is the best country in the world. And I say, yeah, because where you come from, everybody watches your every move. So as, as me and my husband is getting in the car, he runs behind the car and starts to take a picture of our um, of our. A license plate. I want to show you this because I thought this was terrible. Oh, shoot. There's a problem. I thought it was going to come up, but it didn't. But I'm going to post this. But this that was terrible. This man ran behind a car after he asked me not to tape him. And I politely said I wouldn't. And then when I told him that it's freedom of speech, freedom of um, freedom to uh, tape, and I'm telling him we're in public. You're on my property. I say no, I'm on the sidewalk. So as he like, as I'm telling him all this, like I say, he runs behind me and starts taking pictures of uh, me and my husband's car. I don't know what your problem is. I'm just guessing that you may be an illegal immigrant. Either that or you're wanted for war crimes. I don't know what your problem was or why you felt like you had to take me and my husband's car. But when you mess around with my husband's property, then I got problems with you, sir. Don't you ever do that to another foundational black American. We came over there to try to buy something from you and, oh, I'm scared. I don't want that. That's, that's rude. You shouldn't be taping people. I can do what I want. It's on my person. And I'm walking around like this. If I can police the police, I can watch you. So I'm just saying some of these car places are horrific. You want to take my money, but you don't want me to take. And we're like in the public. Then you tell me, well, you're on my property. Fine, I'll cut it off. I'm on your property. But once you go behind my car and start taking pictures of my tag, all bets are off, boo. So I don't know what you're hiding from. I don't know why you don't want to be on camera, but you will be on camera, trust and believe, because you had no right to do what you did. You were wrong. So back to Kamala Harris. So, you know, you're this this woman has said so many things as far as um uh when she was in college, she listened to Tupac. Tupac wasn't even out singing at this particular time. Uh she uh, was talking to someone, I guess it was CNN or ABC, and they were asking her why, you know, you haven't been down to the borders yet, why? And she made some smart comment about, and I, I've never been to uh, uh, Paris before. Something she was saying, what do that got to do with anything? And I'm like, this woman, for one, I feel, this is just how I feel, there's princes. There's kings, there's rulers who are men, there are some queens, uh, the most uh, 
the most famous queen just passed uh, maybe about two or three years ago. But you know black folks or whatever. But speaking as a woman, you got too many. And, and some people, they may disagree with me, and that's fine. But I feel like speaking as a woman, you don't need to be president of the United States. All these high flashes. And then looking at you, you you a lot of times when people talk to you, you're like caught in, in like looking like a deer caught in the headlights. You don't know how to address anything. When you do address something, you're very uh, sarcastic about it. And there's no king, prince, ruler that's a man in the, in the free world that's going to respect you. To me, if you've been laying on your back all your life, and this is just how I feel, to get where you're going and then you're there, that's just like um, <laughs> a picture I see with a caption that says, when you apply for the job, and you didn't think you was going to get it, and you got it anyway. And then the picture shows a cat with a dog, with a, uh, you know, the police dogs, and they got the police dog uniform on. They show the cat with the police dog uniform. That's how I look at Kamala Harris. You're not equipped to do this job. You know, you may be smart in some areas, but in this area right here, no. I don't think, I don't think, you have the stamina, nor the knowledge, nor the confidence to carry out what it entails to be a president in the United States of America. Now, I'm tired, like I said, of this, oh, we're making history. Like I said, most people that's in, that's that's been in high places, like the Jamaican woman, she was the first Jamaican woman. Uh, that was in the White House that they had. I, I don't know if she's Secretary of State or whatever. She's something. I don't really get into politics like that. All I know is they they lie. Like Alyssa Slotkin. How are you? I I, I got to change gears. How are you? Um, You say you was in the first and second Iranian war or you was in Desert Storm or something. How are you not helping... Uh, the veterans. How are you not helping the veterans? How is uh, Kamami not helping the poor? You're talking about the middle class. So what financial range is middle class? Is it 100000 hundred thousand, two hundred, three hundred thousand? 300000 You didn't say anything about what you're going to do to help the poor. You didn't say anything about that. So, so what are we looking forward to? Because it's rich and poor. There's really, they're really been trying to do this for the longest. Make it rich and poor. Like back in the old English days. Either you were rich or you were poor. And that's what they're trying to do now. How are we working so hard for a paycheck? You slapping taxes on a paycheck. If a person build a house from the ground up, here you come like an old dirty pimp with your hand out. Where's our cut? What you mean, where's your cut? You ain't built nothing. You ain't put one wood in place. You haven't done one pipe laid. You ain't laid not one pipe. But yet and still, you want money. The bad thing about this is I don't have children to go to school. So why am I paying school taxes? Why am I paying school taxes when I don't have children that goes to school? You 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 guys do this one size fit all and, and it's not a one size fit all. You just don't want to take time and individually deal with people on their level. And that's terrible. So uh oh yeah, you heard uh they were saying that um some people have been going into these polls to vote for Trump and it wouldn't go through. And, um, but when they go in and vote for Kamami, that the votes go right through. So, I don't know what that is all about. I don't know what type of game. Well, it's a game of Stratego. Have you, when, when we were little, there was a game they had out called Stratego. That's what it is. It's the powers that be that's looking down on the little people, and they're moving folks as pieces. They're emotionally moving us around. Because they're dividing us with this Kamala and Trump thing. 
and one person to get mad because one person voting for Trump and another person to get mad because another person is voting for Kamala. That's the divide and conquer game. And you guys are falling for it hand over fist. They are the two, the two, they are uh, one side of the same coin. Democrat and Republican, that's one person. You're not always liber liberal in things. You're not always conservative in things. That's one person. They, they are one body, but they want you to think that they're separate entities, and they're not. And that's a game a lot of us don't understand. And if you understood the game, you'd be like, you know what? I'm not voting for either one of them. It's going to be how it's going to be. God controls everything, and, and when it's all said and done, God has the last say. I'm not looking for no man to take care of me. I don't, I'm not looking to be under no man's wing or no man's protection. I'm looking to please the Lord. And a lot of you Christians ought to be ashamed of yourself. Y'all not Christians and pastors. You bring these lying animals up in your, and that's how I feel. You bring these lying animals up in your church and they, they give you a kickback, which you shouldn't be doing that. And having to have mercy on your soul for that. Oh, uh, so and so came to my church and they said they were gonna do this thing. And I'm talking about people on a local level too. Especially when it's time for the people on a local level. Y'all have all kinds of trash running through these churches. And that's a shame. It shouldn't be that way. But we say that. We're Christians, or we love the Lord, or we want to be followers of Christ. When you got trunk or treat, you got things like this in the church. You practice all kinds of holidays in the church. Not only that, Halloween actually starts off a suicidal time from October all the way up to, like, I'll say the beginning of February. Because there's a lot of people like Thanksgiving. Well, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for this. You're supposed to be thankful every day of your life. And the only time you get to, oh, Lord, praise God. And when you get around other liars or phony folks that, you know, act like they're for the Lord. But then when you get home, you're drinking, you're having sex, then it's unprotected. And you're uh, laying around with Tom, Dick, and Harry or Betty, Sue, and Mary. But there are certain things in the Bible you'll say, well, I'll do this, but I won't do that. Then if you're not good in all, you're not good in none. You know, we all sin. But the thing is, are we going to continue to do it and then still say that we're something that we're not? We're all supposed to be striving to do what God wants us to do. But we all look at man like, if I don't impress him, then... um. I, 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 he, he may not like me. Who gives a care if who likes you? You better hope Jesus likes you. You better hope he loves you enough to let you in. Around this time of the year, the media, uh, this uh, ASPC or whatever, and Wounded Warrior Project and all of these so-called people that's helping folks, they come on TV talking about help the poor and help. They're not even helping the poor. It's a business. Meanwhile, there's real life people that's when the holidays come around, they have nobody to talk to. They have they have nobody to be around. Then there are some people that's hurt, and you may call them mean. I'm not going. I'm not being bothered with you. Hurt people, hurt people, and sometimes all we need to do is show some type of caring towards them, and and that. Icy heart will melt like never before. Now, one of my phrases that I say throughout the day, and that is more for me than for anybody else, uh, is if no one's told you today, you are so loved and very much appreciated. So I was in Target one day and I seen this lady. Oh, my goodness. She looked like she would bite your head off you if you talked to her. And I was going to say something to her. And... I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to talk to her. But something in me kept pushing me to say something to her. And even though my flesh didn't want to, I still 
honor what, you know, my gut was telling me. And I walked up to her and I was like, well, if no one's told you today, my dear, you are so loved. You are very much appreciated. Every time I see a beautiful little face in my mind, I'm going to say a prayer for you. Y'all, this lady broke down. She started crying. She started telling me how she was going through a lot, how she had lost some people in her family, and she's going through things with people in her family, and, you know, there's a lot of things going on with her job, and she don't know how to deal with it or who to talk to. So I spent like about a half an hour, 40 minutes talking with this woman and saying a prayer for this woman because I felt like, and she felt a lot better after that, but I felt like if I hadn't said that, where would this woman have been? There's a lot of people who commit suicide around this time of the year. There's a lot of people, especially around Thanksgiving and Christmas, they commit suicide. They feel like they're unwanted. Some people are detached from their families. Some people's family detach themselves from a certain per person. I call them a black sheep. And, um, you know, I, I, I call myself that too, but I'm not about to have a fit because I can't sit down and eat food with a bunch of Negroes that don't give two shakes of a lamb's tail about me. Whatever. I mean, now me and my family, we're together. But when my mom died in 2013, everybody backed off. And I had to grieve alone. And sometimes I still grieve because I didn't have my family with me. So we just started talking maybe about a couple of years ago. We just got back together. And we were a big family. So I couldn't believe that I was put on the outs like that. You know, I couldn't understand why that happened to me, but everything happens for a reason. It made me a stronger person. And even though I was going through everything that I was going through, I was still doing my show. I was still going to school. I was still learning some things. I mean, I was still doing me and enjoying my life. And I want to say that to a lot of people that's out there and feel like, oh, don't nobody love Somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. And... If don't nobody that you feel should love you, love you, love yourself. Love yourself enough to grow. Love yourself enough to get out and experience things. Love yourself enough to give love back to those who want to love you. Because like I said, there's a lot of people out here who suffer around this time of the year. So after everybody has a second personality, from Halloween wearing masks and being this person and being that person, and then some people can't even take off the character. You may be able to take off that mask, but the character still runs with you. Now everybody want to be thankful. Then it's joy to the world and goodwill towards men. Then when January come, everybody back to business as usual and being hard. Now in at Thanksgiving, Christmas, you see a bum on the street. Uh, could you help me? Oh, sure. God bless you. January come, same bum. Could you help me? Get away from me, you bum. That's a double personality right there in itself. How are we ever supposed to be the loving people that we claim we are if we're always changing up our character to suit other people? Consistency is the key. I, I, I'm just not getting how we make it seem like uh, we're this person that we're not. And a lot of you, and I really need to say this. I said this in one of my earlier shows because I did something uh, around for the uh, Halloween, but I, it is 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 uh, choppy, and I don't think you heard it. Like I said, I'm gonna take those down, but. I was saying how a lot of your your children you you wondering what's wrong with this what's wrong with you why are you going through this Halloween come you let them put on a whole another different character and be a whole different character while me at, at school they're being bullied they're being their peers are talking about them taking advantage of them they may have a mother or daddy that's on crack or whatever and this that and the other you may buy them a, a Halloween suit and then when Halloween is over with. What what do a lot of them say? Ma, can I just wear it for a little while longer? Or can I sleep in it? You're turning your children into people that they shouldn't be. And you yourself. You get around. You go to these parties. And just, just cut out Halloween. You go to certain parties and be around certain people who treat you bad. Your peers treat you bad like, like the ch your children's peers treat them bad. 
But you won't never know that because you don't sit down and talk to them. So after your peers treat you bad and you start getting upset and you leave, you in the car thinking about everything you should have said to them, but you didn't. Then when you get home, you torture your child or bully your child because you can't bully the people that just bullied you. Shame on you. A lot of you parents shouldn't be parents. And I guess that's why Kamami ain't a, a parent. Because I can look at her demeanor and tell this woman would not make no, and this is just my opinion, so whatever, shut up, this is my opinion. Just by looking at her and the things she say, she, her child would be messed up. Just because of following her track record over the year. I kind of knew who she was, but I didn't really know who she was until she got into office. And then I started um, uh, researching her because I like to know who is in office, you know, what these people stand for and, you know, uh, how they feel about certain things. And especially, I'm so glad, Lord, that I didn't forget about this. Abortion. Now, I was talking about this in 2015, 2016. Why are you telling the sisters, oh, yeah, you can do whatever you want with your body because um, this is your body, and if you want to abort your child, this ain't your body. You didn't make this body. You didn't even put breath in this body. So who are you, murderer, murderer, to kill a child? And I'm not talking about people who... Uh, went through incest or got raped or anything. And there's even some people who's been raped and had the child anyway. And you got to have a strong mind and be a strong, loving person to do that. But who are you to treat Planned Parenthood like a garbage can? You want to run around and sleep with everybody. And then once you end up getting pregnant, oh, I'm getting rid of the baby. I'm going to tell you something. People die having babies. People die having abortions, too. Oh, I don't like him. I'm getting rid of this baby. This baby could be something great. How do you know some of you people, and I've never heard of it, but I'm quite sure that this has happened before because there's nothing new under the sun, and just because I've never heard of it don't mean it don't exist. There's probably been women that went to abort a child and they ended up dying and the child lived. You know why? Because that child was meant to be here. If you don't want to have an abortion, keep your legs closed. Especially around this time of the year, a lot of people get pregnant because uh, it's, it's it, and the, the terrible thing about this is I know sometimes ends don't meet for a lot of people on welfare. And, uh, you know, that's why they have these um, holiday jobs out here and this, that, and the other. But you'll find some old person or you'll find some gullible person, man, and uh, lay on your back all season long talking about how you playing somebody. No, you getting played. You know why? Because God is watching every time you lay down with these men. And you talking about how you got somebody wrapped around their finger. How you know this person is not giving you all types of diseases or whatever? Because some diseases will not hit you until 5, 10, maybe 20 years later on in your life. But you're pimping. You, you doing the dang on thing. You know what? Good things come to those who wait just like bad things come to those who do bad and think they didn't get away with things. I'm going to make him buy all my kids' uh, Christmas stuff. And then you got Tom outside waiting for you so you can go around the corner and him off. And then you tell Harry, uh, stay here with my kids for about 30 minutes. Meanwhile, scary Harry is over here molesting your children. Ladies, if I said this once, I've said this a million times. Quit letting people you just meet watch your children and spend time alone with your children. Matter of fact, nobody should meet your children until you get to know that person. 
when we were coming up, there was a couple of ratchets, but not like they running rapping now in this day and age. You don't care what goes on as long as you get what you want, even at the expense of traumatizing your children. Not just your girls, your boys too. You get drunk, pass out, Scary Harry or Lou Leonard or whoever, go into your children's room, beat them up, torture them, and then torture them again by molesting them and say, if you tell your mama, I'm going to kill her. And because your children love your ratchet, dirty draws, they won't say anything because they're scared. And then you pull good things away from your children, like just say the the neighbor has children, and you say, yeah, yeah, you can go over there, you can go over there and, and, and play with them, you can go over there, I don't care, I don't care, because you only care about you. And it's not always drugs all the time, but seven times out of ten it is. You just don't want to be bothered because you want to do what you want to do. And that mother over there is better to, to your child than your own, than you are. Now your child wants to go over there all the time because she knows what a loving mother looks like. So what do you do? Get jealous. Pull your child away from somebody who's giving them the time of day because you're jealous. Not only that, you take it out on the child. Some of y'all jump on y'all child, bully y'all child because your child has feelings for another person. How idiotic is that? I'm telling you, if we don't get ourselves in order, it's going to be a problem out here. This has been going on for years and years and years, and, and trust me, it's, it's going to come to a head. The sad thing about this is there's, there's a lot of good black women and men that take care of their children that get caught up in stuff like drugs, and it's because they fall into the wrong crowd, and I can understand that. But then... They want to get help and they want to get themselves together. The state come and take their children. They get themselves together and they still keep their children. Meanwhile, you got these crackheads out here leaving their children for two and three days. They run in the streets. They letting any and everybody come and run up in through all through their house. The state come and take their kids. And a month later, they never they dropping dirty. And they still get their children back. Then something happened to their children and they say, oh, we did not foresee this. Yes, you did. You did foresee it. There's a lot of you state people. You're terrible. You take children away from good parents and put them in these foster care homes where a lot of monsters live in these foster care homes. And you give them a license to watch the innocents. And meanwhile, they're ripping their spirits to part, to pieces. Shame on the government for doing that. Shame on the government. You know what else I say shame on the government about? Shame on the government for having so many homeless veterans. You can bring all of these immigrants over here and you can spend all of these billions of dollars somewhere else, but you won't take care of your own backyard. You won't take care of your own people. The United States ought to be shamed of itself. You got people living under viaducts, living out in the streets, living in abandoned homes, and then y'all tear down the abandoned homes and they don't have any place to go. Now, mind you, yeah, there's a lot of um, addicts and stuff that go into these homes and then they end up dead and, uh, and some of these abandoned homes. You find people that do bad things to folks and, 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 uh, and, um, inside these abandoned homes. So yeah, it, it's good that you do uh, knock these uh, homes down because there's a lot of children that go back to school right when it get dark. I don't know what this daylight savings time is. You just need to have one set time. Ain't no, ain't no such thing as daylight savings time. If you got a man, if you got, if you have to, if you have to do something to the time, if you have to twit, tweak the time, if you have to pull it back, pull the front, there's no such thing as daylight saving time. And the darker it is, and this is how I feel, the longer it is for 
the ill-gottens of the, the dregs of society to run around. And the, the longer it is dark, the more dirty deeds that's done. Then a lot of you parents have cars and you let your children walk past these abandoned buildings in the dark where monsters are. And then something happened to somebody down the street. Well, they should have been taking care of them. Oh, I can't. Woo, girl, I can't stand her. But you can't stand her. We're not talking about her or him. We talk about a child. But then something happens to your child. And it's like, oh, please come help me, my child. Girl, bye, boy, bye. Everybody's so into their own little world and can't see past their own stinking selves until something happens in their lives. And trust me, if you don't have a higher power in your life and you're not dedicated to that higher power and you're looking at other things like musicians and weed and drink, you looking at that as your idol, God have mercy on you. Because no matter what happens in this lifetime, good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to keep my eyes towards the Lord. I'm not dependent on command me to help me. I'm not dependent on uh, Trump to help me. I'm not dependent on no man to help me because if the Lord put the favor, uh, his favor on me, no, you can't resist but to help me. I don't know why I'm helping her. Because the Lord said help me. And that's another thing that I want to talk about. We need to quit letting all of these. Now, we already know they have all of these immigrants coming in. And then they're putting the, putting them up in these swank hotels. They give them like $4,000 a month to live. They get free education, free med medical and all this stuff. And then they get businesses in our neighborhoods. Why are we going to these people? Some of you people, oh, he cool with me. Because he throw you some kibbles and, and you see him doing your people bad. And you'll sit up and laugh with them. They call us a mids and niggers, which mean, uh, nigeros, which mean nigger and monkeys. And you laugh and you think it's funny. You better learn another language. And if you don't learn another language, learn what those words are. As soon as they get up in our in our community, we all in to spend all our money with them. Like this place, U.S. Quality. I went down there one day. It's right here on Joy Road in Greenfield. I went down there one day, and they had donuts, I think, on sale for $1.99. I go buy them. I get home, and they're $3.99. And then I call, and the lady that sits up in the manager's booth and everything, talking about, well, what that got to do with me? What do you mean? Don't worry. I won't be coming in here anymore. And I went on Google because I am the Google queen, and I made uh, a review, and I told, I said, why is it that we go to these people and they can talk to us bad, or you'll see them talking to your people bad, and they say, as long as it's not you. Guess what? Sooner or later, it will be you. We got to stop running to these people just because they put a uh, some type of uh, building or grocery store or something in our neighborhood. Sometimes we need to go out our way to show a person that we don't need them. They had a sister. That came over here. I mean, a, sis, a foundation of American, a foundation of Black American sister, put up a store somewhere off Joy Road. Do you know none of us would go to this sister's store, and she ended up having to close her doors? We ought to be ashamed of ourselves. These people don't care about us. It's a business. They want your money. They know how to look at you and laugh and joke. In their country, they had to always keep a smile on because if they didn't keep a smile on, they would get shot. So they used to putting on airs. They're used to wearing different uh, expressions and different faces because if you talk to me and I don't like what you're saying and I'm not the type of person to sit up and be like, no, you're going to see every expression that I feel about you in my face. Why are you looking like that? Because you're getting on my nerves, dear. Well, you're a Christian. You shouldn't do that. The Lord said, be angry and sin not. This is my face. I can twist it any type of way I want, especially if you plan me scandalous. We better stop taking advantage of each other because of some other race. Well, they ain't never done nothing to me. Give it time. 
That's what you do. Give it time. And you women and you men that send your children to these stores to get cigarettes, because I've seen it. These Arabs, once you get close to them, they'll, they'll, you'll send your child down there with a note. They'll give your children cigarettes and alcohol to bring home to you. But guess what? They're calling your, your children Hamids, which is monkeys. They're laughing at them. Our poor black sisters that have drug abuse issues, that's addicts, they're taking these, and they have children, and they spend all their money, they take them in these back rooms and have sex with them for a pack of bologna and a loaf of bread. When you see that stuff, call it out. That's not funny. That could be your mama or your sister. You know what? Some of y'all, y'all so dirty, you wouldn't care if it was your sister. That's why a lot of y'all, when the Lord be like, I don't know you. Oh, no, Lord, I helped uh, a man in them, and they had uh, a builder there, and I helped them build build their store and this, that, and the other. Yeah, but what did you do for your people? What did you do for yourself? Why did you strengthen the hand of the evil doer? Whenever you laugh at them laughing at our pain, you're strengthening them. Whenever you see them cheat somebody that comes in there drunk, a black foundation, a black American may come in there and be drunk and they get them a hundred dollar bill and they get them changed for a 10, you're strengthening the hand of the evildoer. Even though they're drinking, there's no reason for them to be for nobody to take advantage of them like that. And any black foundational black American that does that, you're going to hell. This is just my interpretation. If you don't stop, you're going to hell. The government bring all these Haitians, all these Africans, all these Nigerians over here and lump them in with us and say they're black Americans and they're not. 70% of these nations don't even like us. But they like our flavor, flavor and they, they copy, copy all of us. Oh, oh they're cool. cool. Once, Once again, again, it's a business. Like a car dealership, they, they do whatever they can to get your business. business. They, they don't care nothing, nothing about you. you. They, they sit up and talk about us all day on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram and how we're lazy and we don't do nothing and this, that, and the other. Our forefathers put their blood, sweat, and tears into this country, and we should have to, like Paul Moon said. But we're still innovative people. We still get up and go to work every day. There may be some people that take advantage of the system and shame on you in due time. Your children are hungry. You are here selling government food stamps to people so you can get a fix, or government food stamps to people so you can get a drink. Worse, government food stamps so you can go and buy you a new outfit to go out for the weekend. Ghetto. How ghetto are you? Meanwhile, your kids going from house to house, literally begging because they're hungry. And you don't care. Our community needs to do better. You've been living next door or across the street from one of your black sisters and brothers for the last 10, 20 years. Won't talk to them, won't do nothing. Let a Mexican or Arab or or a Spanish or or or, or a Palestinian or something move on your block. You would you doing everything for them. You done turned into an op now. You know, don't go over so and so house. And you know, a couple of years ago, sister so and so did this. Oh, you know, brother, sister, brother and sister so and so they had a fight and they was on the front yard. Stop acting like a damn CIA op. Stop that. You just tell the enemy all our what's going on. Because I look at at a block like a house. And each house is a room in that house. And we're living together. But then when somebody come in, you you so quick to want to tell them everything that's going on in the house and they really shouldn't even be here. We're being gentrified. Every time we go somewhere, they start, and if you notice, in, in, in Detroit, more and more white people are coming back to Detroit. They went out, 
to way out wherever they went, Dearborn Heights or whatever, wherever there was wood, wherever there was forest, wherever there was land for the animals to be, and they didn't tore all that stuff down. Now you got moles and deers and hawks and owls and all kinds of wildlife in the city now because of what they what they did. Because the plumbing ain't so good out there. It's always uh whatever it's always flooding when it rains. Now they're moving back here and guess what they're doing? They're gentrifying. They're trying to push us out of a place that we've called home for so long. And then we and when they move over here with us, you forget where you come from and you just act like step and fetch it. Shame on you. Now, I've been doing this for a minute and I'm hoping that my sound is good. It seems like it's good. Uh, I tried it out a couple of times. I want to start streaming, but for now, I'm just going to continue to record because I'm learning how to do my streaming. And I came on a couple of times to stream and I didn't have uh, any sound and it was going really slow and everything. So I'm learning a little bit at a time. I want you guys to know that I love you. And if I didn't, I wouldn't be coming to you and saying these things. I love my sisters. I love my brothers. And a lot of you sisters and stuff, I need to say this. Quit walking around half naked and then when somebody say something to you, you want to fight or you done lost your mind. I can dress how I want. Yeah, you can. So if you feel like you can dress how you want, don't be mad when people say how they feel. What Dave Chappelle say? He was looking at the girl and her breast was coming out of, up out of a turtleneck and he was like, oh, look at them breasts. And she was like, don't say that to me. And I am not a whore. And he was like, you may not be a whore, but you are wearing a whore's uniform. So when you do that, don't be surprised the stuff that come out of a lot of men and older people's mouths. Because older people look at you like a harlot. She's walking around here looking like that. And you like, I don't care. I'm young. I can wear whatever I want. I don't know who told you that, boo, but no, you can't wear whatever you want. Because we're living in a day and age to where there's wild folks out here. There, there's people out here, immigrants, that they came over here from other countries. They will rape you and kill you. No, you can't walk down the street like that like you used to do. Because now America is a melting pot. And these countries are giving us all of their um, their criminals, their rapists, their murderers, all, all over the country. They're talking about how people are, especially in Chicago and New York. See, Detroit don't play that. And people will come together. And I know people will come together other in other uh, states and other cities uh, in and around their states and this, that, and the other. But Detroit, I think Detroit is very tight-knit. And... And I feel like, you know, it's, it's, no, no. You're not just going to come here and feel like you can do whatever you want. That's not about to happen. I love my city. I think Detroit is the bomb. If you see me walking around and I got my body cam on and it's out in the public, don't you dare tell me to shut my body cam down because I'm going to give you a tongue lashing. Whatever my eyes can see, that body cam can see. And when I go home after a long day and I put my body cam on, it shows me the things that my eyes miss. So it's like I'm wearing one, two, three, four, five pair of eyes. So I just want to let you guys know, everybody's talking about, oh, this is the big election. We need to watch this one very carefully. They say this every year. Oh, this this is really the most important election. We need to watch this election. Even when Barack and Michael became, uh, it got in office. Oh, we got a black president. He's not even a uh, foundation of black American. And when he got into office, he didn't do anything for Foundation of Black Americans. You know what he did? He did something for himself. He made it possible and wrote a bill for same-sex marriage to legally get married. Take it how you want. There's a lot of people that we look up to and look to as mentors and don't know nothing about them. And then when somebody tells you something about them, you, you instantly close your ears. Oh, I can't. This is terrible. They could never have done this. What, what, what did Cat Williams say? I've known them two weeks. They never would have done that. You know what else we need to do? Get some thick skin. 
So when your brother, when your elders start letting you know or trying to hip you the game or give you some knowledge, you don't get offended. Because a lot of you young folks get so offended by your elders talking to you, and then you want to fight some of these elders. How dare you? Especially you young folks that land up having all these kids. You got five, six, seven kids, and you only 25 years old. Some of you got five, six, seven kids and you're 23 or younger. And then you sit up talking about what? You ain't going to do this. You ain't going to do that. Let me ask you a question. When um, FIA tell you to fill out this paper and be here at a certain time, do you do it? Oh, coin. You respect people that don't give nothing about you more than you do people that can help you and, and show you a better way of life. A lot of you women, you don't want to, you, you just want to have children. You don't want to work. You just want to lay around and, 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 and when your kids is in school, just the first trick you see, bring them into the house. You don't trick patrol. I pray that these women that I'm talking about, some of you, because all of you ain't going to follow, and you, you, some of you going to do what you want to do. But I pray that your eyes be open, whether it comes in a lesson learned or you actually listen to somebody and they opened your eyes before the lesson, you had to learn the lesson the hard way. Go to work. Get you some, consist some consistency. Some stability. Let your children look at you and be proud of you, not ashamed of you. You don't know what these children are saying to your children because they know you're a whore. And the block knows you're a whore. And this is a shame that there's grown folks that sit up and say bad things about children, about their own parents. You know your mama a hoe, right? You, they, they know that. They don't need no grown man or no grown woman telling them that. Get your own life in order. How about that? How you on the corner drinking, ain't got a job, a window or, or a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but you got the nerve to sit up and tell this innocent, you know your mama a whore. Was your mama a whore too? Are you a whore? And I'm talking to the men as well as the women. Because some of you men be on these corners looking for tricks, too. Leave these children alone. So, until next time, I love you guys. You guys, stay strong, please, and be strong.